Okay, so the new topic is geometric transformations. And this year we are going to talk about the special subtype of geometric transformations. They are going to be the isometries, or in other words, congruence transformations. But let's first talk about geometric transformations in general. They are mappings, they map points of the plane, or it could be also space if we were talking about three dimensions, but in this year we are going to be only talking about the plane. So points of the plane are mapped to points of the plane. So the domain is points and it maps points to points, so the range is also points. And an important property of geometric transformations is that they are one-to-one -one mapping. That's why we can consider them actually as functions. So let's see a concrete example. If you have two concentric circles, concentric means they have the same center, and you decide that you map each point of the smaller circle to a point of the larger circle in such a way that you connect the center with the point, let's call this Q, and then this image point is going to be the intersection point of the larger circle with this straight line, or ray, because it's only a half line. So this is going to be the Q dash. Usually we list the points of the plane with capital letters and their image points after the mapping are used with the same letter, designated by the same letter, and using a dash, meaning that this is the image of that point. So this is a one-to-one -one mapping. Every time you pick a point on the domain, which is the smaller circle, you will have one and only one point of the larger circle, which is the range, which corresponds to the original point. Of course, this is not a distance-preserving mapping. It's actually enlargement, which you already learned about in your previous years of mathematics study. Okay, so the special subtype of geometric transformations that we are going to deal with this year are called uh, distance preserving. They preserve the distance. And they have two names, they are synonyms. One is you call them congruency, or congruent transformations, or the other name we use is isometry. Okay, I will write here the Hungarian equivalent, which is and it follows that when two figures were mapped from, from the other by congruent transformation, then we can say they are congruent, or in Hungarian, they are egyabarko. Okay, uh, actually in class 10, you are going to learn about similarity, similarity, which is not a distance preserving uh, transformation. One example of similarity, which is, yes, in Hungarian, one example of similarity was this one, this uh, mapping which enlarged the smaller circle into a larger circle. It's also a geometric transformation. It's also a one-to-one -one mapping, but it is not distance preserving. So we are going to not deal with that this year. Okay, so the first type of uh, distance preserving transformations or the first, instant, uh, first example is line reflection. And we are going to discuss the properties and the definition of this particular type of transformation. Okay, so let's see then the first example of congruent transformations, namely line reflection. Here you can see the Hungarian name. How do we define a line reflection and what do we need to be given in order to know what is going to be the image point of a given 
segment or a figure, a triangle, or anything on the plane. So let's see this concrete example. We have the axis of symmetry or axis, axis of line inflection. This is going to give us how to deflect or to what to reflect. And I got a segment, PQ, that's the original segment, and I want to deflect it. And you all know how to do that. So let's first see the procedure. And on the basis of the procedure, we can give the definition. So I drop a line or construct a line which is perpendicular to the axis and go through T, uh, Q, this is the line, and then I extend it and I measure the distance of Q and line T on the other side of the axis, and that gives me Q dash, the image point of point Q, and I repeat it the same, same procedure I repeat with point P, I draw a perpendicular to the axis, T axis, and then I measure up this distance on the other side of the axis, and this is going to give me the image point of P, P dash. As you can see, it's distance preserving. The distance between P and Q is equal to the distance of P dash, Q dash. So how could we give the definition of this transformation? We have to distinguish two cases. So given the axis of reflection, that's our T line, we assign to every point, point P dash in the following way. If P is on the line, this is element of the line. So if it's here, then obviously the image is going to be the same since the distance of P from the line is zero. So if this condition holds, then the two points are the same. However, if P is not on the line, then somehow we have to describe this state of affairs, and it's quite easily described because we know that this distance is same as this distance. We also know that this segment is perpendicular to the axis, so actually what we have is that the segment created by the original point and the image point has its perpendicular bisector T. So that's what we are going to say. So if P is not on the line, then axis T has to be, or is, the perpendicular bisector, bisector of segment P, P dash. This describes exactly what we have if we carry out uh, line deflection in the correct way. So basically, this is the definition of line deflection, and it, it, it describes something that you already knew how to do, but maybe never thought about it in this way. Okay, let's continue with the properties of line inflection. First is always we ask whether the transformation has fixed points, fixed lines, and invariant lines. Fixed points, as their name suggests, are those points which stay where they are during the transformation. This line contains infinitely many points, and whichever point you pick, let's say P, as we discussed with the definition already, the points of the axis remain the same, so they are fixed points, all points on the line, on the axis of symmetry, let's say this way. They are all fixed points, all points of the axis. They are all fixed. It follows that if you consider the T axis as a line, itself the axis remains the same point by point. Nothing moves on that line. So we also have a fixed line, one single T itself. Okay. Invariant lines are a bit different because invariant lines are those lines which remain the same when you look at them and their image, but not every point of it. 
So let's consider a line, let's say line E, which is perpendicular to the axis. If you take a point here, okay, point Q, you all know that the image of Q is not going to be the same. It's going to be actually on the other side of the axis, and it's going to be the same distance since this is the perpendicular bisector. So it's not fixed by point and point, but as a result of having this line always containing both the original point and the image point, the line itself is going to be invariant. The image of the line and the line itself are the same, but not point by point fixed points. So all lines which are perpendicular to the axis, to T, they are all invariant lines. There are infinitely many of them. Okay. Uh, the next property, sorry, I wrote this property twice. I have to fix that because here I meant something else. So let me change that. The next thing we want to talk about is what happens to lines when you reflect them. First, consider a line which is not perpendicular but intersects T, let's call it line F, in an angle alpha. If you carry out the line reflection, which you can by taking this point which is fixed and taking any other arbitrary point on the line F, let's say it's Q, you reflect it, you get the image, and this image point plus the point which remains fixed gives you the image of F. And this angle remains the same. So property 3 is that the line intersecting the axis in angle alpha and its image also uh, encloses the same angle with the axis. So let me write that down. So you can see here property 3 written up. If T and F enclose angle alpha, as I showed you, then T and the image of F, F dash also enclose angle alpha. Next one, when we consider lines which are parallel to T, I put it on the board meanwhile, so G is parallel to T, then the image of G, that is G dash, is also going to be parallel. So the image of lines parallel to alpha are also parallel to parallel to T are also parallel to the axis T. Property 5, uh, line reflection, reflection is angle preserving. Here I put on a triangle and I constructed the image of the triangle A, B, C, A bar, B bar, C bar, and you can see that all the angles alpha, beta, gamma are preserved in the image. It can also be proved we are not going to prove it now, but it, follow, it follows from the definition uh, and pro previous properties of line reflection. So we have seen that distance preserving, that was the definition of congruent transformations. Congruent transformations are those transformations which preserve distances. So that means any figure you take and its image the corresponding line segment, so in this particular case, the line segment AB and its image A bar, B bar, have the same size. The last property changes orientation of figures. That's very nicely seen in case of triangles. Uh, this orientation here is clockwise because the letters of the uh, vertices are A, B, C. I reflect it and you can see that it became anti-clockwise A dash, B dash, C dash. So that it, that is what changes orientation means. Notice that if you reflect back the red triangle again, so you carry out line reflection twice, you get back the original picture, so you actually end up with an identity transformation if you carry out line reflection twice to the same axis.